We'd like to welcome everyone to the July the 15th, 2021 monthly school board meeting. We will pray with us, please. Dear Grace Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the day that you made. It's a beautiful sunny day, and Lord, we know you're shining on the inside of each and every one of us. And Lord, we ask you to help us tonight that we make uh, good decisions, that we'll be good stewards over everything <coughs> we're in charge over. And Lord, we pray that you'll keep all of our students, staff, and all of our citizens safe. And, and we uh, just ask your blessing on each and every one of us here. In Jesus' name we pray. And if I said, Amen. Amen. Ohio County Schools, Schools provide students, students with the skills, knowledge, and support, support to achieve excellence and lifelong learners. Do <coughs> right. you have your agenda in front of you? If there's anything you want to pull off to discuss or something you want to add, now be the time. If not, any a motion to approve the agenda in a second. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? All in favor. Recognition. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. We have, uh, it's July, so usually in keeping up with tradition, it's a uh, time for celebration, but also a little bit of a sad day uh, because we're going to celebrate those who have uh, made that decision to retire and move on to new challenges in life and uh, new adventures. But it's also kind of sad for us because we're certainly losing a lot of experience and certainly a lot of expertise and wisdom. And I have the list, and as always, I want to go through the entire list to make sure we recognize everyone's name, but I know not all 23 are here tonight. But if you are here, when I call your name, if you'll just come forward, I want you to tell us a little bit, maybe about what you've done. Uh, I see some of you are panicking your eyes already. I tell you what, I'll make it more simple. I'll make it more simple. I want you to just come up, and if you don't mind, getting a picture made with me. And if you don't object, I'll put it on Facebook in a few days. And we have a gift for you. And maybe you can just simply tell us, if you don't want to say a lot, just how many years you have served Ohio County Schools. And uh, some of you, I know it was in the same position, but some of you have been in different positions. So maybe tell us a little bit about uh, your history or your journey with the school system. Uh, up first, uh, and these are just in, in the school order here, at ALP at Render Center, and I don't think she's making on me, Miss Brenda Sims. Miss Brenda Sims worked with us for several years, but I know she did come from another district as well. And uh, she has made that decision to retire. Fordsville. I know this individual is here. Miss Polly Wayne. Miss Polly was an instructional assistant. <laughs> Among other things, what all the titles have you had, Miss Polly? Uh, apparently, liaison, uh, just library assistant to librarian. So. No! 14. 14 years. Yeah. So if you don't mind, okay. look at this bull up and <laughs> we've got you a gift. This is uh, for you on behalf of the Hawk County Board of Education. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you very much. There you go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. At the middle school, we had a couple of individuals. It is hot in here. Sorry. <laughs> uh, a couple of individuals, and uh, I don't think they're here tonight, but let's mention them nonetheless. Mr. Glenn Renfro, Glenn Renfro, he taught social studies at Ohio County Middle School for many years. And also Mr. Todd Autry. Mr. Autry taught language arts uh, at the middle school, and he's been around for, I believe it was 27 years, maybe even 28 but he made that decision to retire this summer. Horse Branch. Now here's a familiar face that is certainly familiar to me. As long as I've been in the district and know of Horse Branch, she has been there and has been one of their leaders. And she's certainly going to be me. It's Miss Angela Emery. Twenty-nine. <laughs> Thank you for that correction. 
And uh, it's taught a lot of different grade levels, correct? I started out um, at Centertown. Okay. And then when Centertown closed, then I went to Horse Branch and I've done a little bit of everything. Fifth grade, K one two split, if you can imagine, and then in the times of Kiris and Kara and all of that, and then um, I was the Title One coordinator and I was the higher order thinking skills teacher, and then I went back into the classroom with kindergarten and came everywhere intervention and finished in kindergarten. So. I finally graduated from kindergarten. <laughs> That was Colonel Mark Lakel. Mr. Brian Barrett is here with us. I'll, I'll name some of them, but Mr. Barrett can certainly tell us all the hats that he has worn throughout the years in the school district. But I know it's been several. I know he's been at the middle school, been administrator, uh, been at the high school, and has taught computers and technology and has done credit recovery and yearbook and what else am I leaving out? Just about covered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it has a lot years. of hats. 27. 27 years. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks we appreciate so. it. you have anything you'd like to say? I will. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything out of you. like to thank everybody in the whole school system. I look around and I mean there's people in here, the students that I've got, people I've worked with, administrators and you know central office staff. That's just what makes Ohio County, I won't make a big poster of it, but that's what makes Ohio County good in the high school. I mean you know I left them, they took me back and I uh, just love them. So the whole the whole school system and everything. Sort of like Appreciate you. Says. Appreciate thank you. Sir. There you go. Thank you, sir. Tammy Titchener, uh, Miss Titchener, uh, I think taught at maybe McLean County for a little while, but was with us for many, many years, and she taught math as well as also special education, so kind of dual certification there. Miss Suzanne Williams? Yes. Miss Suzanne Williams, instructional assistant. <laughs> Anyway. All at the high school? Uh, no, I started at Whalen. Okay. Uh, chapter one, Title One, uh, sub ed and special ed. Christy hired me permanently for special ed. Uh, ended up at the high school. Loved it. Loved Very every good. minute of it. So yeah. Um, Ohio County High School and Whalen and others that I stuck in were all family. They all accepted me. So very good. Very good. Thank you very much well, for thank your you. service. All right. Thank you, thank you. Ms. Brenda Alden. I was going to say, I don't think I saw her come in. Ms. Alden has also worked at the high school for several years and uh, most recently was in like the world of work position where she was taking students out uh, for job experience and having them work in the, in the various community businesses that we had. At Southern Elementary, we have Miss Mary Hunt. Twenty-nine. They don't 29. all count. They were all at Southern. All at yes, Southern. Yes, uh, I was luckily my children were there, so I would I went out there and I volunteered. And Mr. Davis, he just. He said, how about we put you on my pay our payroll, so. So volunteer and stuff. I, I did, I did, and we'll probably go back and volunteer. I already miss them, so. Oh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And Western, Thelma Scott, in the food service department. Ms. 
this down in how many years? Uh, 27. But 27. actually, 12 or 13, that was instructional assistant. Okay. And then I went to food and service. Food service. Yes. And I worked with Kara yes. and Miss uh, Reagan's one hired me, and that was in 91. Very good. Thank you very much for your service. Oh, thank you. Bye. Appreciate that. We're going to miss you. Miss Marilyn Thompson. I didn't think I saw her come in. Tammy Stout, I didn't see Tammy come in, but she's worked with us many years at Southern and also Western. Shannon Booth is not here this evening. And Miss Shannon worked probably around 30 years. Janet Durall. Doral, thank you. How many years? Twenty-two. Twenty-two in the in the, in the cafeteria all at Western. Yes. Very good. Thank you very much. I, it was a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard, but I must have made it look fun because the kids would just stand there when they bring the plate and just watch and wave down, and then one of them would say, "That's what I want to do." I want to. And I told no one until I passed, but 
Billy come in and my daughter-in-law, uh, she's out center town and been there quite a while too. She's a preschool assistant. But um, I uh, subbed on the bus for about a year and a half and then they got me full time and I love it. Uh, then I not only did the regular bus, but I did preschool. And then I also, uh, they called me one evening and wanted to know what I would like to do. It's called KSD, but it's Kentucky School of the Deaf. You transport the kids back to Ports to Danville. I also did that. And I have to say, like I said, I love my drought, I love my kids. So no, I didn't fit for <laughs> that reason. But um, I love my job. This is the best job ever. Ever. And I'm sure anybody that fools with kids, you have your good days, you have your bad days. They make you want to scream some days, and some days you just want to hug them. And I'm telling you, they, they really make your day. It's, it's a wonderful job. That's Thank you so very much. Oh, Miss Kim Baird. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Kim, how many years? A little over 20. A little over 20? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to agree with the rest of them. Um, I raised three boys. And when you, love, when you have kids that you love, you just want to help with all the other kids. I started out in the lunchroom, monitoring on the buses. I did lunchroom between my routes. Um, you just, you get touched by so many of what goes on and what they go through when they feel that they can come in talk with you about problems that they have, then you, I feel like you really have done what you were supposed to do. And I said, the Lord put me where I was at, or I wouldn't have been there, you know, so. I was blessed. I was just blessed to be able to take care of everybody's children and get them where they need to go. And, and the board was good when I had issues at home with my boys with their medical problems and when I lost my son. and. Um, you know, it's, it's a great place to work, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Yeah. Appreciate that very yeah. much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I don't think Miss J. Durand came in tonight, did she? She's going to say I didn't think that saw her come in. Miss Durand has retired as well. Uh, and Waylon, I don't think these ladies slid in on us either, but we have Miss Marjorie Lelly. Uh, she is retiring. And then we also have Miss Wanda Beamer, who is retiring again. I know she wasn't coming because she let you know she was out of town. But that's a lot. When you look at those names, I think there's 23 names there. That's a lot of experience that our district is losing. Uh, we can't thank you enough. I know sometimes maybe that sounds too cliche, but we mean it. We can't thank you enough for what you've done for the, the students of Ohio County. Uh, we're certainly going to miss you, but we wish you the best of luck in whatever your future hopes, and whether it's watching grandkids or whatever the case it may be. Uh, we wish you nothing but joy and happiness, and hopefully some of you will uh, decide to come back and substitute or, or work with us in some capacity. You're always welcome home. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. You are certainly welcome to stay, <laughs> but if you would like to leave, this would be an appropriate time to do so.
struck out. Yeah, I not want her to attack. We need them to make a little more of a customer. I know. Try to listen. I'm trying to recruit people. He said the last one I recruited is now a mechanic instead of a bus driver. I'm trying to. We'll just keep working. Keep recruiting. You are an awesome principal. And I just let you know, I was taking a seat in the field position. Appreciate that very much. Absolutely. I had never really told you that, but I'm very proud of you. Yes. It's always a good time, but uh, like I said, sometimes it's a little tough. You hate to see that much expertise walk out the door, but they have all earned that right, as you heard, a lot of years. Uh, they have earned that opportunity to, to go home and enjoy retirement. Uh, I was going to do that under my comments when we okay. get to superintendent remarks. All right. Have any requests to speak? We do have some requests. Uh, do you all wish to speak or would you rather pass at this time? We're good. We're good. Okay. We don't need to speak, right? Or one thing I did. Oh. I need to stand up. Yeah, come up. Yeah, you can come up here to the podium if you'd like. My name is Laura Lloyd, and um, I used to be a high school science teacher, and I'm not teaching anymore because of health problems that I have. Um, I've not been to these meetings before, so I'm not sure exactly how this works. Um, we were able to talk to Mr. Southern before the meeting, uh, but one thing I did ask you about, um, there are many of us parents that are concerned about um, things that have happened with um, Team Kentucky requiring masks for the students. And so those are things that we were discussing before the meeting started. And um, so Mr. Souther talked about what he, I think he's gonna talk about that later. One thing I forgot, to mention though that I, that's why I decided to go ahead and come up and speak about this is that what was put out yesterday there are four pages and on the second page it states that it is required for masks for the students on public transportation so I did want to ask about that part and I know since this just came out yesterday I know not everyone has had time to read this but as we all know, uh, many things changed many times over the last 16 months. And there are many of us parents that are concerned about the welfare of our children and the negative impacts that we believe masks have on our children. And at some point later, we'll be happy to discuss those things that many of us believe. I know there's a lot of controversy about that but when we take into consideration that a virus particle of what they say that the COVID particle size is, is about a thousand times smaller than the, part of the size of the pieces on the masks. And that's a big concern, you know, to many of us, why <coughs> do we even need to bother wearing a mask? I mean, there are many, other things, you know, physiological effects to our children and things like that, that we've seen with our children and other people have seen. Teachers have told us about situations that were very negative to many, many children. And as being an instructor for over 10 years um, and listening to all these wonderful people speak, um, the students, not just my own two children, but all these students mean the world to me, and that's why it's important to me to come here. Even though I only have two children in the system, I would still love to be able to teach 140 some students every day like I used to, you know? So that's why we're here. 
It's because we care about the children, and we just wanted to make that known. Okay, so we would like to find out what you think will be happening in just a couple weeks if these children are going to have to wear masks when it's 97 degrees on these, or 80 to 90 degrees on these buses. Thank you. Thank you. Board members, do you have anything? All right, I have, I have a few things. Uh, one, thank you all for uh, your support, your calls, your prayers, uh, the flowers, food, all the different things that you all sent to the funeral home over the last couple of days. Uh, it's been a difficult past few days. Uh, I know with my wife losing her mother and for my family, so oftentimes it was even more than that because she's lived with us for the last nine years so she became part of our family and was not just a mother-in-law. But today's been a challenge, uh, but the girls were adamant in me performing the service. So the good Lord, I feel like, uh, helped me do that today to deliver that message and do so with able to keep my composure. Uh, but appreciate all your thoughts, your comments, your kindness uh, to not just the board members, but to all my staff here. It's uh, been very thoughtful. I'll give you my thoughts on school in just a moment. <clears throat> but before I forget, there's a couple of individuals here that I would like to recognize tonight. And I would like Miss Bullock to uh, get their pictures, at least one of them for sure. So we have two individuals that are this summer have been appointed to new positions in leadership. And of course, I've already made a Facebook post about Mr. Alex Embry. Mr. Embry, if you'll come on up here. <clears throat> you all know Mr. Embry. Uh, he has been... He has been with us uh, for a few years, on and off, but he has taught, uh, if you listen to the radio show, I kind of talked a little bit about where he's been, and it's a lot. He's taught at Beaverdome Elementary, he's taught at Ohio County Middle School, he's coached middle school boys basketball, he's coached high school boys basketball, he's taught high school at McLean County, he's taught at our Render Education Center, he's been our athletic director, he's been our principal at Ohio County Area Tech Center, uh, he was named assistant principal at Ohio <laughs> County High School, and before he ever even got to start, because he didn't start until July 1, in the same month, he actually was named head principal of Ohio County High School. So we certainly congratulate him. Uh, we're looking forward to the future. It's been uh, very enjoyable the last several weeks getting to talk with Mr. Emery about his ideas and his plans for the upcoming year. Uh, extremely personable if you don't already know him very well uh, but that I feel is a good strength of his and dealing with people and building relationships and I think the Howe County High School has a lot of good things in store for them in the future so this is Mr. Emery uh, so congratulations Hate to put you on the spot, but the floor is yours if you want to say anything. I don't anything. take too much time, but it's fitting that you say all that, you know, listing my career experiences. My wife kind of makes jokes that I've had a different opportunity. <laughs> and then this year I had two opportunities in about three weeks. So, uh, but she's been really supportive and just bites the bullet and goes along with flow. So it's been just one opportunity after, the no after another, and I feel very fortunate to have those opportunities. And, I feel very blessed, you know, I went to another district who welcomed me with open arms, so I had the experience to coach basketball, and um, I had a really good experience there, really good people in McLean County, but it's not home, and it's not the same, and um, I try to tell that to people who look, are looking out outside of the county at opportunities that they don't know how good they got it here, and um, that starts with you, Mr. Sutter, and then I think that you being able to do the job that you do comes from these people in this room, and I want to thank all of you for your support. Um, I know you make some tough decisions month by month, day by day, and uh, I appreciate you guys being willing to sit on this board and make those decisions. And um, just like me, I, I, you're doing it for the kids, you're doing it for our community. And I have two little kids, and they're going to be Eagles one day. They're going to be in this school district, and I'm excited about that, and I'm excited to be here and be a part of that and help grow this district and our high school into what we want it to be. So. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you for letting me come up here and speak. And I'll stop talking because I know you got a long meeting. Ahead. You care to get his picture? I won't come around again if that's okay with you. I really want him. Yeah. <laughs> really want me. Why don't you get right there? This old looks like a mugshot. <laughs> <laughs> you have to stand sideways. Last time. Last time. We, last time we took a picture of him and put it on Facebook. Somebody made a comment that his head looked too big. <laughs> that was one of your employees. <laughs> It was also his dad. That's not nice. Yeah, all these nice comments. Congratulations. And then there's this comment that said, I didn't realize your head was so good. <laughs> 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 I bet they treat you like they treat me, so let's just go. We'll be honest. I got big shoulders. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, he's going to do a great yeah, job. I understand. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you all. Appreciate it. We also, this one's more, even more hot off the press. This has <laughs> just happened this week. Uh, I texted you all either yesterday or the day before, uh, letting you know that we have a new Ohio County Area Tech Center principal, and that's Mr. Pat Francis. Mr. Francis, if you'll come up. And uh, we mentioned Alex and those things he, he has done in his career so far, and I think Alex is getting ready to start his 10th year. So he's done all those things in nine years. Uh, you make it sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Francis, this is his 11th or 12th year. I'm, this will be my 12th okay, year. Okay, be the 12th year coming up. He has been with us his entire career. Uh, he has been teaching science at Ohio County Middle School. He also has uh, been golf coach. Mm -hmm. He has uh, been Middle school athletic director, three years. Yes, Am I leaving something else out? Uh, basketball coach. There we go. Level robotics coach. Pretty much. If anybody needed anything, <laughs> I'd stupid enough to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but Pat has done a great job at the middle school, and I know Mr. Trader hated to lose him, but uh, we needed him worse than uh, the middle school did, in my opinion, at this point in time. Uh, unfortunately, he has no office at the moment. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, the of, if you've seen the construction going on at Vokay, it is an absolute train wreck yeah. in there at the moment. So his office is uh, kind of, it's going to be at the high school, if you didn't know that, yeah. for a few for a few weeks until we can get things pieced back together. We'll make you a closet. I'm already going to get this nice little decked up construction. Hat. A hard hat. <laughs> it's a word worker. But we're looking forward to it. I know Pat's going to bring a lot of great things to the table. Uh, the committee of the interview was excited and uh, wanted Pat right out the gate, and so uh, we're looking forward to what the future holds at the ATC. And same as Alex, I hate to put you on the spot, but. The floor is yours if you want to talk. I'll speak just a little bit. I'm pretty much a few words kind of guy, but I um, want to thank you specifically and Mr. Hoover and everybody for the uh, confidence in me. I uh, want to thank the hiring committee, obviously. <laughs> but um, I would like to echo what Alex said. You guys make some very, very, very difficult decisions, uh, and a lot of times that doesn't get recognized, so thank you guys for that too. Um, I'm super excited about the new opportunity. It's a little daunting, but uh, very excited, ready to take the flag from where he had it and, and try to run with it a little bit more. But uh, thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. If you get your picture, we'll let Miss Bullock get your picture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can't. No.
the school year. Um, I'll tell you what the intent right now is, and, I, and I've already shared with these ladies, but I'll let you all know. Um, you know, we wore masks all school year. That was mandated by executive order. We had no option. We had to comply and follow the rules or you risk losing funding, and we certainly can't do that to the district. The first week of summer school, we wore masks on the school bus and even there at class. But then, fortunately, guidance came down that that guidance document that we are, were following had ceased. So we dropped the masks. So the, the next two weeks of that summer school session, no mask had been worn. We're now in the next summer school session in July. No masks are being worn on the bus or at school. It is our intent that that will remain the same. Now, just like I shared earlier, we could be trumped on that. You know, KDE could mandate that we have to mask. The governor could sign an executive order again mandating that masks be worn. The guidance document that was sent out, I actually saw it today, KDE pushed it out in a press release and I looked at it around four o'clock or so when I arrived at the office today. And it does recommend masks be worn if an individual was not vaccinated. But if they have been vaccinated, that they don't have to mask. Today, when, when I've been out, I have looked at my phone from time to time and my superintendent's group text that we have going on, there's been much discussion going on about that today. And most everybody is, is like me. They're kind of frustrated at times with how everything's always moving and you're always waiting on guidance. You know, a superintendent's webcast, we usually have one monthly. But guess what happened to the July webcast? It's been canceled. So no guidance, you know, as far as from the Dr. Glass. I don't know why that is. I don't know if they're scrambling as well or they're thinking. But right now, we're all basically in the same boat as far as at school. We all are taking the stance that unless we're told we have to, masks will be optional. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. But if you want to wear a mask, wear your mask and don't, no one belittle them for wearing their mask. You know, if that's what they feel comfortable with, then that's what they should be able to do. We all have our opinion on masks. You know, I, I know tonight it, it was shared, masks and some risk with wearing masks. And I have my opinion about masks as well. It's been several weeks since I've been in one in any capacity. But the, there's also individuals that call here and are concerned about going to school and not wearing masks. So. There's going to be groups and individuals from each side that are going to have concerns. My stance right now is you do what you feel comfortable with. We're not going to cram anything down your throat. Wear it if you want, don't if you don't. And that's the stance we're going to continue to take unless we have to make a, an official verdict and it's going to have to be a mandate. That document says recommend you wear a mask if you're not vaccinated. That's not a mandate to me. Mm -hmm. And even last year, there was times that there was recommendations that came from KDE or the governor, and we didn't follow those recommendations every time. We didn't follow until they became orders and mandates when legally we had to cooperate or we risk losing funding. Unless you all instruct me differently, that's the stance that I still plan on taking and, and, and going with, is that we're going to do what we feel is best and we're not going to mandate unless it is, is a mandate or an order. Uh, so that's kind of where we stand. Yes, I saw that on the buses too. And I know Davis County, Owensboro, and Muhlenberg already come out on the messages on text and said they're going to require kids to wear a mask on buses. But a few of the other districts and myself said today that we're not that we're going to continue to leave it optional until somebody gives us an order or a mandate demanding that we do that. So as long as it's a guidance document from the Kentucky Department of Health, we're not going to make changes 
unless we have serious problems in Ohio County High School, now, I'm, or in, in Ohio County Schools. Now, if our numbers start going off the charts and we have all kinds of issues, then we may have to rethink what we're doing and look to see what can we do to reduce the spread. But this summer, things have been, have been going much better. Mm -hmm. We haven't had hardly any issues with summer school, with kids riding the bus or attending classes, and no one's wearing a mask. So as of right now, our intent is that on August 11th, when the kids come to school, it's optional. Wear it if you want, don't wear it if you don't want. And if we receive something that tells us we have to, I will let you know the moment that it arrives that we will have to take a different stance and then I will also have to get on social media and all the other platforms and let everyone know that, hey, it's not our decision anymore. Someone else has made that decision for us. Uh, but that's kind of where we stand on masks and my philosophy with masks and, and what we will do to start the school year. Um, won't get into it right now, but just let you know my intent also was that there really wasn't going to be a virtual program this year. There was a lot of individuals and kids that the virtual program just didn't work. Now that's what in every case. Some people did it well and they made it work and, and the kids were still growing. But there were so many cases where the students were on virtual instruction and nothing occurred. They didn't do any work and it was a wasted year. So I'm not in favor of having that option again. Mm -hmm. But if we have a mandate, I know some are gonna feel strongly about sending or not sending, one way or the other. So we're gonna to try to work through mechanisms like home hospital, getting doctor's orders. And if it becomes a mandate and if we have several parents that are upset, then it'll be my job to look to see if there's a viable option that we can create as a compromise. But I'll tell you one thing right now, if the student was virtual last year and it did not work, virtual will not be an option for that kid again this year. We're, we're not going to let somebody fail two years in a row. Some failed this year. We are not gonna allow it to happen again. They will have to come to school or they'll have to choose to sign them out of school. But if they were successful and there's valid reasons, then I will consider working additional options with them should we have to mask or no mask and it's very invasive to that individual's family. We will try to comply and compromise, but I may have to look on some of the, at those by case by case situations, but we're not gonna have a blanket virtual program because in my honest opinion, it was abused last year and I don't want that again. And, and as superintendent, I can't support that again. So that's kind of where we stand. I wish I had a construction update for you, but with the last few days being kind of a blur, I didn't touch base with RBS. I, I will just tell you, it's not where we want it to be. Uh, at the preschool, they claim they can make up some time for Wayland but I just don't see right now that there's any way it's gonna be ready on August 11th, the preschool edition. They may have to stay where they're at and it may be two, three, four weeks into the year before they can make the transition over. The ATC, I'm still hopeful that sometime in January that will happen. They have run into some issues at both places with staff. It's hard to find workers the block and brick layers, they just can't find people to do it. They have crews and they show just don't show up. And so there'll only be three men there instead of the eight that they were having and, and they just can't get them to work. Uh, at the ATC, it's, it's stuff that we're having problems with. The switch gear, which is these big switches for the electricity. Uh, we need three, there's three switch gears in the new, by doing the upgrade. We have one of them. The other two are on back order. They can't get the equipment here to make the installation happen. Uh, now supposedly, <coughs> Kyle told me last night that now it sounds like the second one will arrive and if it does, the building should be able to have electricity. 
The third one really won't be needed until the new edition is ready. So there's a chance we can get back on track there. Uh, but I'll know more in the next week or two. Just, just know this. Man, I hate to even say this out loud, but <laughs> I could have to put the ATC classes uh, in the gymnasiums at the middle school and high school for a week or two, if that's what it takes, or if it looks worse than that, I may have to come to you and say, we're going to have to get together, folks. I don't know if we can start school on time. If, if that whole building is going to be down and it's going to be more than two weeks before I can put kids in it, we may have to make uh, an adjustment. But I'll know more in the next two weeks or so, and I'll keep you uh, updated via text or phone call, and we'll just see how things play out. That concludes my superintendent's report, Mr. Chairman. That is a whole lot. <laughs> That's going to be a lot to think about. Have a lot to happen still in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, you've had time to look over your consent agenda. Yeah, motion and a second to approve the I'll make the motion. I'll second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Well, you have your personnel report <coughs> and change them. <laughs> Constantly, <laughs> daily, unfortunately. Miss Captain, here's your report. <coughs> for the month of June. In the second column, we began the month with a general ledger balance of $25,772,987.60, total revenue of $3,571,686.23, less expenditures totaling $5,437,419.81, brought us to an end of month balance of $23,907,254.02, the Baird Investments had a market value of $2,282,874.63 and the payout value of just a little under $2.2 million. On the bank side, we began the month with $26,594,186.41. Our deposits and credits included the seek allotment from the state of $1,319,327. State federal grant reimbursements of $1,435,290.01. We received the second half of our building fund allotment from KDE of $550,532. Uh, some of the, the uh, property taxes are still coming in. Of course, motor vehicle, we get every month. Um, it was $67,697.78. We received a reimbursement for state and vocational school, $41,886.50, and uh, real property taxes, $29,339.55. And you can see the smaller amounts for Medicaid reimbursements, bank interest, the federal food service reimbursement, just a little bit on that side of it, um, and then um, just a little bit on the food receipts, local taxes, and utilities. We didn't receive any. Sometimes that falls and we don't, we'll, uh, group and get two in one month, so that's why there wasn't anything for that. So we'll catch up on that, I'm sure. So total deposits and other credits were three million five hundred thirty-nine thousand five sixty-five thirteen. Our checks and other debits totaled three million eight seventy-four seven ninety-two seventy-five. Less our outstanding checks it brings us again to a reconciled balance of twenty-three million nine zero seven two fifty-four zero two. And that's up uh, about 8.8 .8 million, but the, uh, about 8 million of that is what is uh, from our bond proceeds that's sitting in, in construction, uh, waiting for the, uh, the work to be done and bills to be paid on that. So that will be uh, going down as we go over the, the next year or two. So is there any questions about any of that? Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.
Need a motion and a second to approve the treasury report. I'll make a motion. I'll second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Okay. <coughs> approve the lease agreement with the uh, Boys and Girls Club. Before I jump into that, can I tell you something else I forgot to mention a minute ago? It'll be brief. Uh, I know I texted you all this information, but I did receive that official letter from the Board of Elections and that they were going to utilize Ohio County High School, Fordsville Elementary, Western, Southern, and Horse Branch in the elections. Um, and that obviously each November we were always out of school anyhow, but in the May election day, we usually used it as a makeup day but by Ohio County Board of Elections saying that they are now using our facilities, we will not be able to go to school in the May election day any longer. That'll have to be a no school day. Um, and by law, they have the authority to do that. I had Mr. Conway check in to that and he said that is correct. They can uh, require the use of the school building. So <clears throat> I didn't have amend the calendar on there because fortunately for us, May 17th was election day slash closing day. And then when you look to the right as makeup days, the next day wasn't May until May 18th. So in theory, we already have the 17th marked as a no school day. So I just wanted to call your attention to that, that that's why the calendar wasn't on there. Question. Yes. They're gonna use every school? The ones that I mentioned, wasn't every school. It was the high school, Fordsville, Western, Southern, Horse Branch. They're not using Beaver Dam and Whaler. I think they're going to use the high school to high school. do those. So for those. And those are going to be the voting centers instead of all these instead other Instead of all the precincts, and that's what this okay. letter mentions, that there was a KRS that told them to implement a new plan to eliminate some of their voting precincts into voting centers. So they are eliminating 19 precincts and will now have six voting centers. Okay. So I just want you all to be aware of that. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Lease agreement. Boys and Girls Club. I shared this with you last month for you to review. Uh, you all said it looks pretty good. Let's give it to Mr. Conway. He made some tweaks and adjustments on it. The, the biggest adjustment was the he put in a uh, insurance to be carried by the uh, lessee because that wasn't in there before. That way, it's, if somebody falls, gets hurt, it's not automatically on our insurance. And he suggested coverages in those three blanks that are on page five. He suggested 100,000, 300,000, and 50. I talked to Ms. Holly Lindsay today um, when I first arrived back at work, and Boys and Girls Club already has insurance through EM Ford and their figures exceed what Mr. Conway suggested. It's one million, three million, and one million. Right. So with your blessing, I will add those figures in there instead of blanks, and then once those figures are in there, that will be the document that you're in theory approving tonight. And it'll be my recommendation that you approve it. We're doing some upgrades uh, in the restrooms there as we speak, so that hopefully it will be uh, in better shape for them to begin, I'm assuming in August, right? So I think when school starts, the plan, his plan is to get it open. So uh, be my recommendation that uh, we approve this lease agreement. That way they can make plans to start moving forward. We had a recommendation from the superintendent. I need a motion and a second. I'll make a motion. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? This is something that I shared with you all uh, in text, and it's that same document. We just did add the bottom line on there that shows you what the total cost would be. Um, we've talked about doing this. You know, we received those federal funds, and with our spending plan, we have bought many things and have scheduled to buy many things. This summer alone, we have already purchased over $1.1 million worth of instructional supplies out of those ESSER funds. Uh, textbooks and a variety of different software equipment that can be utilized and so forth and so on. Our new uh, 
intervention teachers that you created a couple of months ago will be paid out of the ESSER funds. We'll be able to use those funds to even pay for our literacy coaches that we had previously created, thus saving the general fund some money. And the goal in doing that is obviously we're providing more services, more supplies, but we're also saving a little bit of money out of the general fund. Uh, you know, my plan would be in the near future to hopefully look at a bus garage and then bringing everybody in that old building down and attaching them to this building and so that we eliminate uh, the bus garage as we know it right now and get them something more modern and that I feel would be a better work environment. And looking at that spending plan, I know it's hard to believe, but it's, it's a lot of money. So when you look at it, there's still a lot of money left. And I know some districts are looking at doing things for their employees. So this is what Kathy and I put our heads together and have come up with. Uh, that we would like to move forward with this plan and you can see that uh, it gives a date in August that if you're working for Ohio County Schools in August then you're going to receive a one-time supplemental pay of that figure that's on that piece of paper and then if you look there's a couple other dates throughout the year and a couple other figures throughout the year but I believe our employees have worked extremely hard during this pandemic and they've went above and beyond the call, call of duty and this is allowable use of those, those funds. And I think we need to give back to our employees. And this is across the board. It'd be for every employee. There's not a difference between certified and classified. Everyone would get that same dollar amount. It has to be full time, right? Yes. So anybody that works four hours a day or, or greater and classified uh, is considered full time. So be my recommendation that we had approved this plan and um, we may have to start sharing it in some cases beforehand and if not we'll wait to opening day but in some scenarios it's a good recruiting tool letting some people know that's considering Ohio County that look here there's a few extra thousand dollars that you'll get this year if you'll come to Ohio County uh, or if someone's getting ready to leave. I'm going to instruct, if you approve this, I'll instruct our principals tomorrow to let someone that's getting ready to leave know that this is coming. If you stay, you're going to get these additional funds, but you got to be here. Um, and then if those that don't know about it, uh, maybe we can make that announcement on opening day and give the specifics with all the staff and I'm sure they'd be very appreciative. And again, they, they deserve it. They've worked so hard. It, with going through a lot of unique challenges this past year, and I think it's time to give back to our employees. Be my recommendation that we approve um, this one-time supplemental pay program, if you will. All right, we have a superintendent's recommendation. I need a motion and a second. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Motion carries. All right. Do we have a reason for a closed session? Yes, sir, we do. Possible litigation. All right. I need a motion to go in closed session for KRS 61.810. I'll make a motion. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carried. We are now in closed session.